Good morning and welcome back to another video from Hidden Heights Farm. So last time I left you guys on the barn project for the goat feed bunk. Uh, we just got both sections of the wall done and now it's time to move on to the actual feed trough. And uh, like I said guys, uh, I'm trying to do this 100% out of the uh, lumber that we mill from the trees and the wood here on our property. And it's time where I got to build the ramp to pour the feed in and then the actual feed uh, the actual feed bunk or the feeder or the trough whatever you want to call it and uh, you know a lot of people will just use plywood and rip it down to make the slide or whatever you want to call where I'm gonna pour the feed down it's gonna slide down into the feed bunk but like I said um, I told you guys I wanted to do hundred percent out of the oak that we're uh, milling here with Dutch's Norwood sawmill so I'm going to have to get creative. I've been thinking about it for a few days since I left you off uh, from finishing the wall. And I still have not actually came up with a great plan. So we're just going to kind of wing it and uh, go with it. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, then we'll uh, step back and redraw some stuff and see how it comes out. So anyway, stay tuned for today's video. Today, what I am going to work on is the actual feed bunk. Um, hopefully we can get it done. And then... Uh, the next thing will be the gate and then the actual jump gate for the livestock guardian dog daisy our anatolian so i'm gonna go uh get some stuff ready in the shop i think we're gonna we're gonna get some measurements on how long we need to make the feed bunk on the first section and then i think we're gonna have to uh start screwing some boards together i'll show you guys when we get in the shop all right guys so the first thing we're gonna work on is the actual feeder or the part of the feed bunk where the actual feed is going to go into and I think for that I want to use one of the wider boards but I want it to be one of the thicker boards for strength so I want to pick out two of them there should be two pieces in here that's pretty much identical um, widths and if not I can rip them down with the table saw and these right these pieces here are the red oak this piece here looks pretty thick because if you guys know goats you know they like to tear stuff up so these pieces these two pieces here are about an inch thick each and they're probably about four and a half to five inches wide so let me get them out here in the middle of the floor and uh, we'll take a better look at them So they look nice and straight. I need to cut off the ends to make them uh, flush. But um, this one over here, it's got a little bit of a bad spot. You can see where the water was getting into the tree and it's kind of rotted a little bit. But I think we can make this work. I think we can just cut this part off. Uh, these are about 12 foot long and that's about the thickness of the feeder that I want to build. So I think these are going to work out great. So I actually almost forgot the most important part of today's project is locking the goats out of the barn. You guys, uh, if you guys follow me, you know how they are, uh, they act like piranhas. As soon as I walk in this barn, they swarm me, they try to knock me over, they're wanting food 24 seven. Here they come. All right, see if you guys will follow me out. Come on. Here comes everybody else in. 
Come on, guys. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Come on, Daisy. Get back in here. So Daisy kept getting out just about every night chasing coyotes. So I had to kind of redo my uh, corral system over here. And I leave this gate like this. I don't have any wire or anything on it. And usually, unless she's gained a lot of weight, she can go in and out of there. Let's see if she'll do it. Come on. Come on. Smart girl. Smart girl. So I did have this gate on there. I have a cattle panel on there. And I had it close to right here. So it was blocked off. But now, since the predators have been coming around, since it's been uh, winter time, it's cold weather, they're starting to hunt a lot more to feed their young and all that. Um, Miss Daisy's been getting out every night, jumping the fence and running them off. I actually got a game camera set up and I've caught her just about every night running coyotes and deer, which I don't want her running the deer off, but when they come around, she sees them as a threat. So that's why I went ahead and just left this gate open. She's smart enough to jump through. And uh, that actually gave me an idea on the feed, the feed jump through gate for her. If the one I have designed in my head does not work, I might be able to do something like this. Because she can get in there and the goats can't, right? All right, let's get these goats out of there. I'm not feeding you guys. Okay, that ain't gonna work. Let me go get a bucket of feed. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just said that and now they all came out. So let's see if I can get this door shut. And I bet there's always one left in there. Let's see. Nope, they're gone. Okay guys, so when we're milling this lumber, you always have quite a bit of scraps. So I got a few ideas to brace up this little feed pan, I guess you could say. So we got these little posts here we kind of cut out of some of the scrap pieces. And they're mostly, the diameter dimensions are about three inches by three inches. And let me show you what I got in mind. The good thing about it is all the sides are nice and flat. So I already got one piece in here. And what I'm thinking about doing is putting this piece up here like this and screwing it to this board and then that way whenever I bring my feeder out this will actually rest on it and then I can put a lip on the outside of the feed bunk that way the feed don't fall out so it's kind of hard to explain I'll try to get this kind of set up and show you guys as I go like I said I'm just doing this in my head I don't have any really good plans to go off of
I'm gonna go ahead and
So now I got that little scrap piece of like three by three. It's a little off dimension from one end to the other, but it does have a little uh, live edge bark on it. I'm gonna leave all that on there. And the reason I went ahead and put that on there like that is to add a little support to the bottom of the board I'm gonna use as the actual bottom of the feeder. So uh, I went ahead and pre-drilled all that stuff. Just, you know, I don't want anything cracking that way it stays strong. And even with that impact drill, that three inch oak, that's, that's a pretty good job for that little impact to even screw in uh, those torque head screws. So now that I got that on there for support, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it up there and I think it's wide enough for what I want. I know a lot of people are gonna be saying, well, that's not really wide enough for a uh, goat feeder, for a goat to get its head in. But if you look at some of the plastic goat feeders and stuff, like they sell at Tractor Supply and other places, those things are about the same diameter and uh, we've used them in the past and we've always had good luck. Now, one good thing about this is if I go ahead and build it like this and it does not work out or it's not wide enough, it's not going to be that big a problem since I'm using these screws. I can always go back and I can either uh, adjust the width or totally redo it. So I'm going to get busy and try to get this thing knocked out.
Okay, since we have the feet, the bottom of our feeder put on, now I need to figure out the uh, height of the lip that we want. So I was thinking about one inch, but that's pretty that's pretty low. So I'm thinking about maybe one inch and a half, one and a half to about two inches. That right there should give them plenty of room to still get in there to get the feed and not knock it out. Because if you guys know goats or mine, anyways, as soon as you feed them. They just, they flock to the feed like crazy and they, they're really messy and they would be bad about knocking it out. Now I'm not worried about the back because that's where our ramp's going to be. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put the front on there. I think I'm going to go with maybe an inch and a half. Uh, let's see here. That looks about right. That's about one and seven eighths. I'm thinking two inches because I sure don't want to pour that feed in here and then them go crazy and just knock it all out. Just trying to figure this out. Alright, inch and a half. We can always redo it if it don't work.
Okay, so the feed trough for the first part of the feed bunk is done. I got the sides on, all three sides. Now, we just gotta do the ramp. And I think the lip's gonna be just fine. And I know a lot of you are saying, oh, you got a bunch of uh, splinters and stuff. Well, I'm gonna get my sander before I'm done completely. And I'm gonna smooth all this off so nobody gets any splinters in their tongue or not. Which I don't think will be a problem anyways. Um, if you guys know anything about goats, Goats eat briars and thorns and stuff all the time, and it rarely affects them. But I will go ahead and sand that off just to make it smooth, because I sure wouldn't want to eat off of something like that and get splinters in my tongue. So I know a lot of people have been asking about, oh, butterscotch. There she is right here. Supervising, ain't you, girl? She's been in here the whole time, pecking around, eating some of that food in the bottom of that feeder there. So... I'm gonna head to the shop and I'm gonna get to the drawing board and figure out how to uh, put the ramp on the back.